Hi, I'm Norm Abram. Welcome to the New Yankee Workshop. Now, I don't know how it is around your house, but there never seems to be enough workspace around my outdoor grill. By the time you bring out the meat and the condiments and your other serving dishes, you've run out of workspace. And there's nothing worse than taking a perfectly grilled sirloin steak and putting it on the ground while you close the grill and shut off the gas. So we're going to solve that problem today by building a grill cart. That's next, right here on the New Yankee Workshop. The New Yankee Workshop features the craftsmanship of Norm Abram. Now the materials that I chose for our grill cart are redwood and cedar for the solid material. And these are good choices for outdoor projects. They can stand up to the weather, they don't rot easily, and they're pretty insect resist resistant. Now for the substrate of the top, I'm going to use this MDO plywood. It's three quarters of an inch thick. It's what they make highway signs out of, so it really holds up to the weather, and it should work well for our cart. So if you'd like to build our grill cart, a measure drawing is available with the materials list, and you'll hear more about that before the program ends. Now the first thing I want to do today is to take these four pieces of MDO plywood, and I know it doesn't look it right now, but I'm going to glue them up in pairs, and they will become the blanks to make the wheels for the grill cart. Now the glue that I'm going to use has to be a good exterior glue. So my choice is going to be this urethane glue. And what I do is just squeeze a little bit out onto the piece, and then spread it so I get a nice even coat. OK. I just take a thin piece of wood and spread it around. Now for the mating piece, all I'm going to do is apply a little bit of water to the plywood. This glue actually is activated in the presence of moisture. So we just dampen the surface a little bit, put it on top of the other piece, and make sure we get a nice bond there. And I'll prep up the other one. Now, one of the design objectives of this cart is to make it as light as possible. So I'm going to take all these pieces of 2 by 6 redwood, which are going to make up the legs and all the cross pieces, and rip them down into 2 and a half inch wide pieces. I'll do that at the table saw, and then I'll clean up the freshly sawn edge at the joiner. But before we use any power tools, let's take a moment to talk about shop safety. Be sure to read, understand, and follow all the safety rules that come with your power tools. Knowing how to use your power tools properly will greatly reduce the risk of personal injury. And remember this, there is no more important safety rule than to wear these safety glasses. Now, as far as taking care of the stock, one side of it has a factory edge, which is smooth, and that's fine. The other side is a little rough from the saw cut that I just made, and you're going to see this edge, so I want to clean it up. I'm going to remove about a 32nd of an inch. Now I'm ready to cut some pieces to length according to my plan. The first thing I want to do is square up one end. Now one of the things that's nice about my miter saw station is that I have this extended fence with a built-in tape measure and this stop. So I can set the length, in this case 34 and 3 eighths, and I know that every piece I cut will be exactly the same. I've just made up a sample of a typical joint of the framework underneath the grill cart. I'm using half lap joinery. I've set up my radial arm saw with a dado head cutter to remove half the thickness of the wood, and I lay it out to match the width of the wood. Now when I do the assembly, I'm gonna use a marine adhesive and stainless steel screws to secure the joints. You may have noticed that I've changed the depth of my cut to make this little dado. And I'll show you what that's for in a minute. This is a good point to do a dry fit. I want to make sure that all the joints fit properly. This is the lower cross piece, which is going to hold the lower storage area. And this is one of the uprights. This is the other upright on this end. Then there's a top piece that goes across. Again, fits into the lap joints. And this end will be our handle. Now, the dado that I just made is for a cross piece 
to tie the two side assemblies together. Now there are several more steps before I can actually assemble this piece. One is going to be to form the handle so that it's easy to hold on to as you roll it around. The other is that I want to put a dado between these two cuts to receive the slats for the bottom shelf and I want to make a hole right here for the axle. The bandsaw is the best tool to make the curved cut. I'll smooth up the saw marks at my oscillating spindle sander. To knock off the corners of the handle so that it'll be comfortable to hold, I'm simply using my router with a three-quarter inch radius round over bit. The next step is to make a groove in the bottom pieces to receive the slats for the lower storage area. The groove has to run from dado to dado. Now, it's inconvenient to do this on the table saw because I'll have to do a lot of hand work to complete the groove. So I've set up my router station with a half inch straight cutting bit. It's 3 8 inch above the table. And I've transferred some marks back so that I'll have a better idea where the bit is as I start to make the groove. The idea is to slide the piece in in the dado area, run it through until I come to the other dado area, and then remove it. I don't want the groove to exceed these cross dados. Now I'm ready to drill a half inch hole, which is going to receive the axle for the wheel assembly. I've just cut some slots for biscuits in the top rails and in these narrow pieces of three quarter inch stock. They'll take a number 10 biscuit and they'll go between the rails and this will support the storage draw. A few years ago while working on a house close to the ocean, you notice the builder using this material. It's a marine adhesive sealant. It's designed for the boating industry, but there's nothing better for assembling outdoor projects. Just put it on with a caulking gun, slip the pieces together, and then I'll pre-drill some holes for screws. Now for the screws, I'm not using an ordinary screw. This is a stainless steel screw. And it's a good choice for outdoor projects that are not going to be painted because even when they get wet, they don't bleed and leave stain marks on the wood. To install the draw supports, I'm putting another bead of that adhesive in the slot for the biscuit. And then I'll put some adhesive in the ends of the cross pieces and install those. Now a little bit more of that adhesive in the biscuit slots of the opposite side. And for now, I'm not going to put any adhesive in these cross dados at the bottom because I'm going to need to spread the assembly apart a little bit later to install the wheel assembly and the lower slats. Now a couple clamps along the draw supports to hold everything in place while the adhesive cures. Once again, screws only on this side. I'll have to pull it apart later to get the axle in. Now here's the substrate for my tile top, size to the right dimensions. And once again, it's that 3 quarter inch thick MDO plywood. It has waterproof glue. And you could almost put this outdoors without anything on it, and it would last for a long time. Now what I want to do is wrap the edges and provide a lip to cover the edge of the tile. So I'm taking some 1 and a half inch wide pieces of cedar and putting a dado right down the middle. Here I'm beginning to fit the pieces for the band. And what I like to do is miter one end of each piece, all the pieces being a little longer than what I need. Marking the length of these edge band pieces is a little tricky because of that dado. So what I do is slip on the piece I want to mark, slide on one of the pieces that's mitered on one end, and bring the joint together so it's nice and even, being sure that it's tight up against the plywood in both directions. Then I take another piece of stock and just bring the square edge up against the piece I want to mark, take my small square and line it up with the outside edge, put a mark, 
and then a slash to indicate which way it goes, the miter goes, and then a mark down the face, and I'm ready to cut it. Now I bring the piece to the miter box, and here's where the laser light comes in handy. I slide it so that the line is just in front of the laser and make the cut. Now to attach the pieces, a little more of the marine adhesive, and I'll slide the piece on, move it back and forth to make sure the adhesive is set, bring it to the corner, and I'll attach it with just a couple brads until that adhesive dries. Now the first thing I want to do is use some more of that adhesive right on the tops of the uprights. And then I'll drop the assembled blank for the top right on. Pre-drill some holes and attach it with some screws. Well, before I leave tonight, I think I'll set the tile. Now, I picked up this thin set mortar mix from my tile supplier. Comes in two parts. There's a powder, and then there's an additive, sort of like a milk, that you add into it. Mix it up, and let it set for about 10 minutes so that it absorbs the two elements together. Apply it to the substrate. And first what I want to do is just use the flat side of my trowel and just make sure that I spread it evenly over the entire surface. They've come a long way with these thin set mortars over the last few years. They're good enough now to be applied over plywood or MDO. Okay, now that I've got a nice even coat on, I'm ready to turn to the notched side of the trowel and just rake through the material, leaving the right height ridge for our tile. The size of the notch is directly related to the size of the tile. The bigger the tile, the bigger the notch. Now, there shouldn't be any surprises with the tile. I've sized the top to the tile that I purchased. These are 12 by 12 tiles a ceramic material meant to look like stone, has a pretty hard glaze on the surface so anything that gets spilled on it won't get absorbed. Now all I have to do is bring it over to the piece, set it in, and then just wiggle it around a little bit to make sure I'm getting a good bond. And I'll just do the spacing by eye. I'm going to end up with grout joints that run between 3 sixteenths and a quarter of an inch. Okay, one more tile. Now, I'll have to let the adhesive under the tile dry for at least 24 hours before I grout the joints. That allows the adhesive to dry properly. Now, after that, we'll build a towel rack on this end, a condiment bin on this end, and, of course, the wheel assemblies and a draw. Well, good morning. Over the last couple days, the thin set that we used to set the tile has dried nicely, and they're not going anywhere. So the first thing that I want to do today is grout the joint. And grout can stain wood, so I'm putting a little bit of masking tape over the cedar banding that goes around our top, just to give it a little bit of protection. Now, with the wood covered, I'm ready for my grout. We've mixed it up just with, uh, it's a dry powder that you mix with what they call milk. And this is just pretty dry because I want it to set up quickly. I'm just going to throw a little bit on top of the tiles and then take a rubber float and just work it into the joints. Now, the trick here is our tile master, Joe Ferrani, would say, is to hold the float at about a 45 degree angle and rake it across the joint at a 45 degree angle to make sure it's totally filled with grout. Well, now for the cleanup. Here I'm using a piece of common garden burlap. And I'm just trying to remove any residue that's left on the tile and knock the joint down so it's at the level that I want. 
After I get this cleaned up, I'll use very little water on a sponge to get the remaining residue on the tile. Well, now we're ready to form the wheels. I've taken the blanks that we made earlier out of the clamps, and I've just put a cross right in the middle. I'm going to use my large compass to lay out the diameter of the wheel, which is nine inches. And I'm going to make a rough cut over at my bandsaw. I'm not going to try to stay too close to the line. I'll stay a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch to the outside. Okay, now I'm going to true the wheel up at my sanding center. I'm going to take this little pin and put it right in the center of the wheel and tap it in place. And this will be a guide. It's going to ride right up against this block which I've set for the diameter of the wheel. As I bring it in, it'll end up stopping at the block. I spin it around and I get a perfectly round blank. It works great. Well, it's perfectly round, but it's a bit clunky. So I want to round over these edges with my router. So I've set it up with a half-inch radius round over bit. The axle that I'm using for the grill cart is a piece of threaded rod that I picked up at the hardware store. If I just drill a hole through the wooden wheel, I'm afraid that the thread will chew it up quickly. So I want to install a bushing. And for that, I'm going to use a piece of PVC electrical conduit that I also picked up at the hardware store. It's pretty tough material. So I'll drill a hole through the wheel and then epoxy the conduit in place. Now the epoxy that I'm using is a five minute epoxy. There's a hardener and the main part of the glue. You simply mix it together 50-50. Set it in the hole of the wheel, slide in the conduit. And once it sets up, it's not going anywhere. Well, now on this end of our grill cart, between the handles, I want to build a little bin. And that's going to be for the condiments, the ketchup, the relish, the salt and pepper, the kind of things that would fall off the cart as you roll around. But I want to have it drained, so I'm just going to put slats in the bottom. Now, the sides are going to be made out of some eight and a quarter inch wide pieces of cedar. And I'm just going to miter all four corners. Now, I'm going to put a groove in the short ends of the bin for the two slats. And I've come back to my router station with the half inch straight cutting bit. I make the first pass, then I'll move the fence over to give me a dado that's equal to the thickness of the slat. To reinforce the miter joints, I'm cutting some slots for some biscuits. But once again, I'm turning to my marine adhesive sealant. A little bit in each biscuit slot and some on the miter joint itself. And just slide the pieces together and tack them in place with some brads. Now here's one of the slats installed. Second one goes in next to it. Just wiggle it into place. And these spaces will leave plenty of room for the water to escape. Now I want to paint these wheels really just for looks. I'm just using a high gloss black and we'll put enough coats on until we get a nice, thorough, covered finish on it. All right, well, now I'm ready to install the condiment bin. It just slides between the handles that we use to move the cart around. And it's just slightly below the lip of our work surface. I'm going to pre-drill some holes and use some more stainless steel screws. And now a couple more right into the handle. And this is also going to stiffen the cart up a bit. Now I'm ready to build the storage drawer. And I've just made a setup to make this rabbit. And that's going to go in the drawer front. And what's going to happen is when I put the drawer together, the side is going to come in to this joint. It gives us two areas of surface for the glue. And we'll nail it together. I also want to make a rabbit at the back end of each side piece, not as deep, so that the corner, the back of the drawer, will just lock into it. Now there is a 3 8 inch wide groove, which is going to receive the bottom of the drawer. 
For the assembly of the drawer, I'm turning once again to my marine adhesive. Set it in place, install one of the side pieces, and nail it together with some inch and a quarter brads. Now something I normally don't do is put any glue in the groove for the plywood bottom. But in this case, because it's an outdoor project, I want to make sure it's going to stay together. Let's see if it fits. Ah, that fits great. Guess I'm going to need some kind of knob or handle. Now that the paint is dry on the wheels, let's put the assembly together. I've attached one of the wheels. Now, in between the wheels, I'm going to use another piece of that PVC electrical conduit just to hide the threads. Then I'm putting on an ordinary half-inch nut, and we'll just tighten that on so that it's up against the conduit. Then I'm going to put on a washer, sort of as a spacer so the nut won't be rubbing up against the wheel itself. Then the wheel. Then another washer. And then this locking nut that actually has a little nylon ring in it. And that'll keep it from backing off. Now you might recall that when I put this frame together for the bottom of the cart, I didn't put any glue on one side, and it was exactly for this reason. I want to be able to pull everything loose so that I can slip the wheel assembly in. It goes in the holes that I drilled when I made the frame. So now I'm just going to slide it together enough so it'll not fall out. And now I want to start to install the slats that are going to go in the bottom tray. So what I'm going to have to do is once again put a bead of the sealant on the end of the piece, slide it into the dado that we made earlier, and then just bring it in far enough to catch it. And when I get all nine slats installed, then we'll be able to screw it back together. Now there's the last one there. Some caulking in this dado. And then I'll be able to close it up. And then I can reinstall the screws. Now you can't have a cart without a place to hang the towels. So here I'm beginning to form a couple brackets for the towel bar. Now I've pre-drilled for a couple screws. I'm using a piece of three-quarter oak dowel for the rod. I slide the other end on. And we put it between the uprights of the cart. Drive the screws home. Well, now I want to install some half-inch dowels to hang some of the utensils from. But I want them to tip back slightly so that the pieces won't roll off. So I took a scrap of wood and cut a five-degree angle on the bottom of it. And I could use it as a guide. If I bring the drill bit up to it, I know that I'm angled at five degrees. Now just a little glob of adhesive in each hole. And I'll just slide them in. Now there, a couple wooden knobs on the draw. And that just about takes care of all the work here in the shop. Of course, we're never going to know how well it works until we light up the grill. All right, let's see how we're doing. Oh, perfect. Steak is perfect. And look at this, plenty of room for all the food that we're prepping today. And down below, the shelf is coming in real handy. Plenty of room for a nice big salad and for our cold drinks. The hooks are working well for the utensils. This is a really nice project. Now I hope that you'll take some time and build one of these in your own home workshop. So until next time, I'm Norm Abram for the New Yankee Workshop. Come and get it!